If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer the question on your own first before moving on. We have an electron that is situated between a 1 microcoulomb charge and a 2 microcoulomb charge. Let's examine the interaction between the 1 microcoulomb charge and the electron here first. Now because they are both charged objects, there will be a force exerted on the electron. And that force is an electrostatic force equal to a constant multiplied by the charge of the electron multiplied by the charge of this object here, which we can just call QA, divided by the distance between them squared. Now the distance between them is actually x, so it will be x squared. Now, since the electron is a negatively charged particle and this object is a positively charged particle, this force will be an attractive force because opposite charges attract each other. And so we can draw a force vector showing the electron being attracted towards or pulled towards that one microcoulomb charge. And remember, we're calling this charge A. Next, we can examine the interaction between the electron and the other charge over here. And again, because the electron is negative and this charge is positive, there will be a electrostatic force between them. And that electrostatic force will equal the constant times the charge of the electron times the charge of this object, which we can call B, divided by the distance between them squared. Now, the distance between them is not marked, but of course, if the total distance is 50 between charge A and charge B, and this distance right here is x, that would have to mean that the distance marked right here would be 50 minus x. So we can actually plug 50 minus x in for this distance. Now that is an attractive force, so this electron will be pulled towards the 2 microcoulomb charge. But we'll notice that we want the total force to be zero. And what that means is that the magnitude of this first force must equal the magnitude of the second force. And that way the two forces would balance each other out, leaving the total force to be zero. So in essence, what we're going to do is set these two forces equal to each other. Now, our goal is to solve for x. And what we'll notice first is that the term kqe appears on both sides of the equation. So in essence, we can divide both sides by kqe, which will eliminate it from the equation. Next, in order to get rid of this squaring here, we can do a little bit of a trick where we take the square root of both sides. Now, of course, when we square root a fraction, we're allowed to individually square the numerator as well as the denominator. So we can actually write the square root like this. And when we take the square root of x squared, that's just going to become x. And when we take the square root of the quantity 50 minus x squared, then the square root and the squaring will cancel, leaving just 50 minus x. Now, we could perhaps go ahead and cross multiply. So when we cross multiply in this direction, we're going to have the square root of qb times x, and that will equal the square root of qa multiplied by 50 minus x. If we wish, we can plug in the value for QB, which was 2 microcoulombs, and then QA was 1 microcoulomb. And that's kind of nice, actually, because the square root of 1 is just 1, so we can get rid of this from the equation. And the square root of 2, if you punch that into your calculator, is about 1.414. So we could write this as 1.414x equals 50 minus x. We can add this x over to the other side. Don't forget there's a 1 in front of there. So we're actually adding 1x to the other side. So this will become 2.414x equals 50. And then we can divide both sides by 2.414. And when we do that, we get approximately 20.7 centimeters for the value of x. So this is the correct answer to the question.